well, that's how I used to look. I'm going back to my old self. Amen. And then I'm prayerful that uh, as time go on, we have those VHS uh, tapes. And if you have something, you can play them on. I would really hate to see those tapes just sit there and go to waste. Uh, some of those tapes have some great historical uh, stuff on it. I looked at one the other day, and uh, I was just looking at it, and uh, it really moved me. It's still in there now with uh, Sister Harrison, Walter, your mom, and uh, Sister Melva John. I'm looking at them girls, Sister Ethel White. I'm looking at them girls ushering. Amen. And Mary Thomas on there looking like she's about 22. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Young pictures, and uh, that's an actual video. And, and, and Mike looking at Deacon Mullins and Deacon Foster, looking at all them states and Adams stuck out. You know, they sitting there on the front. I think they was trying to show them Stacey Adams. So those are some great, great videos. If you would like to have one, most folks don't have nothing to play it on. If you would like to have one of those videos, uh, those VHSs, if you have something to play it on, just see me. I would just hate for those things to sit back there with all of those videos of some of your parents and grandparents and so forth on it. You get a kick out of get a kick out of seeing them. So look forward to doing that. Amen. Amen. All right. The blessings of the Lord be on you. And this final announcement that I'll say, well, I have to say this one off the air. I can't say this one on the air while we're streaming. So I'll, somebody remind me that I have an announcement I need to make. So y'all let me know when we're done and we can uh, do that. Amen. All right. All right, Christian, how to talk the spirit out of them. So y'all got to sing the spirit back in them. And I'll say a few words and we're going to be going away from here before 12. Amen. Come on.
If I stand strong, if I stand strong and believe, there's no reason to doubt. I know He's working. I know He's working it out. It's turning around for me. Listen, this is the good news, and it won't always be like this he will perfect that concern in me and soon or later turn in my favor soon or Say that one more time. And it won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concern in me. And soon or your hands with me. Again, God, we need you to move in this place. We pray now, God, that you would bless your word. As you bless your word, grow your church. As always, I need you to come stand in my body As you stand in my body, think with my mind. As you think with my mind, speak with my mouth. Do it in such a way that these, your people, will be edified and your son, Jesus, will be magnified. Bless again your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say together one time, amen. And shall we say it again together, amen. amen. We do bless and praise God for blessing us with the privilege of being in his house on this Lord's day. Those of us who are students of the scriptures recognize and understand that to be in the Lord's house is our Sabbath. The Sabbath in the Old Testament uh, meant that there was a time cut out for God. And we've cut out this time to give some attention to our God. And I'm glad God has kept me and allows me to be in my right mind so that I could come to the cut out time. Amen. I had time all last week to do everything I wanted to do, but this is his time. Amen. And we thank God for that. So we thank God for all the preachers, the blessings of the Lord be on all of you, deacons, and all of you, the members of the Lord's church. Let me draw your attention.
for these fleeting moments we have together to 2 Samuel chapter number 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6 beginning at verse number 9. 2 Samuel chapter 6 beginning at verse number 9. It's an Old Testament story I'd like to work with for just a few moments. Second Samuel chapter 6, beginning at verse number 9, from the New American Standard Translation of the Bible, these words are there. So David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? And David was unwilling to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David with him. But David took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. Thus the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Just a portion of verse 12. Now I was told King David saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him on account of the ark of God. This is the word of the Lord. May the Lord use his word to speak to our hearts. I like most people who live in this country must admit that I have recognized the spiritual decline that exists in America. It is apparent to anyone with common sense that God does not have and hold the place of prominence that he used to hold in our lives. You don't have to be a preacher to know that. You see as well as I see whenever a person can walk into any kind of place of worship and take lives. We're in the midst of a spiritual decline. And because of this spiritual decline, uh, most of our homes don't enjoy the blessings of God. With little or no education, our parents and grandparents recognize one basic fact. And that basic fact was they couldn't make it without God. They couldn't speak good English. Talk to me, y'all. They, they, they took what they had. And thank God for whatever it was. And stayed in touch with God. Most of us, it's after 11, and many of us have yet to have said anything to God. And so because of the spiritual decline that exists in our country, there's a need for us to bring God back. And being a pastor, I get to hear all the gripes and the complaints about church. Uh -huh. 
And that is because people fail to recognize that the church is made up of homes. And so if there are problems in the church, there are undoubtedly problems in the home. I wish I had somebody. I like the words of Joshua when he declared, but as for me, y'all not talking to me. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. In the midst of all of this spiritual decline, I want to submit to you that there is a way to have blessings at your house. And that's all I want to talk about. How to have blessings at your house. I wish I had somebody. Here we are in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, God dealt with people unlike he dealt with them in the New Testament. All right. All right. In the New Testament, they were blessed to have Jesus to walk in their midst. Yeah. All right. yeah. And as Jesus walked in their midst, we understood who he was. Yeah. Yeah. He was Emmanuel. Yeah. Why y'all ain't saying amen? He was Emmanuel which means I am God with you. Are y'all hearing me here? And when he got ready to go, he said, I am not going to leave you comfortless. But when I go, I'm going to send you another one just like me. But here's going to be the difference. Whereas I have been with you. I wish I had some students here. He says, I am going to be in you. Talk to me, somebody. So there we have it. We have in Jesus God with us, but in the Holy Ghost we have God in us. But that God of the Old Testament was so removed from us until in order for us to have an encounter with him, God took himself yeah, 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 yeah. and allowed himself to be placed in an ark. Yeah. I wish I had somebody. And, and, and because of that ark, everywhere that, that ark, it was a, 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 a wooden box that had beautiful lightings all uh, around it. But wherever the ark went, God went. Talk to me, somebody. So in order for your city to be blessed, the ark had to be in the city. <laughs> I wish I had somebody. And in order for your house to be blessed, the ark had to be in the house. I wish I had somebody helping me here. And so here we see a story because here, here, here is a man who is of unintentional fame who has the ark in his house. And even though he's a man of unintentional, y'all ain't talking to me. Even though he's a man of unintentional fame, when the ark gets into his house, guess what? His house was blessed. Are y'all hearing me here? I just said a few moments ago that even though our parents and grandparents had little or no education, they recognized that they needed God. So here's, here, here, here's what they would do. They would make sure that in the living room, y'all ain't talking to me. They, 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 they made sure since they didn't have, I know we had it at our house, and you didn't touch that Bible that was on the living room table. They, they had that Bible, and at our house that Bible always stayed open to the 23rd Psalm. It was over to the 23rd Psalm because it was our parents' way of saying we can't make it without the Lord. So we're going to always remind ourselves that the Lord is 
my shepherd. And because the Lord is my shepherd, I don't have to want for anything. Some of y'all ain't talking to me. Are y'all hearing me here? They kept their Lord in their house because they wanted everybody to know even when it comes time for me to die, I'm not going to have to worry about it because yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. I know we got to go, but I want to look in Obed Edom's house. If y'all got time, I know we got to go. But if we could just have these few fleeting moments together, I wanted to look at what was it that made Obed Edom allow them to place the Ark of the Covenant in his house. And if Obed Edom could have the mic, he would tell everybody in here, you better let God in your house. Talk to me, somebody. You better let him. I want to put it on the record. I need him at my house. Y'all must then hear me. I need him at my house. I don't want to ask you, what about your house? Are y'all hearing me here? I need him at my house. I don't know what may come up. Talk to me, somebody. They, they, they said we live in Tornado Alley, but all I know is God, even if the tornado hits your house, God will get in there and take care of you. When are y'all ought to say amen? All right. If God is at your house, even if you get broke, God will stretch out what you got. I wish I had somebody that will help me here. If you got God at your house, even if you get sick, here's he, he, what God will do. He'll help you to feel better. So I wanted to look in Obed Edom's house. There are a couple of things I saw at Obed Edom's house. That uh, and I saw some of his actions. He was unintended. He, he. Both right, Obed Edom was not intentionally famous. Right. Right. Hey, Obed Edom just—he's an unintentional consequence right. of an incident that happens. Right. David and the soldiers are on their way to the city of David. Yeah. They're traveling on rocky territory. And while they're traveling on this rocky territory, which is indicative of the fact that sometimes even when God is with you, it'll get rocky sometimes. <laughs> it'll, it'll get rocky sometimes. I wish I had a witness in here. And, and, and God had, had laid out specific laws as to who could handle and who could touch the Ark of the Covenant. There was a fella, he, as far as we know, we don't know much about, his name was Uzzah. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he seemed to have been a, a decent fella. All right. And David and the soldiers were traveling with the Ark of the Covenant and all of a sudden the Ark of the Covenant begins to fall and Uzzah runs to his rescue. And he holds the Ark of the Covenant up. He makes sure that it doesn't fall. But here's what happened. Uzzah fell dead. Help me, Lord Jesus. Wait a minute, God, he was doing a good act. Are y'all hearing me? Now, now listen, listen, even though he was performing a good act, he was still disobeying God. And there is no right way to the, uh, y'all listen to me, there's no wrong way to the right place. And so now they're out in the middle or practically nowhere with the Ark of the Covenant. David is shaken up. Are y'all praying with me? David is shaken up. Just give you a little history. And I know, I, I listen to, you know, when people say this kind of preaching don't interest, you better get some God in you. He said, he said I don't know what we're going to do because I got this Ark of the Covenant out here and I'm not going, I'm not taking it into the city because this man died. And so they said, we got to find somewhere to put it. That's, that's, where, the, that's where the text picks up. And uh, I don't know all the surroundings about how they chose Obed-Edom. Dude got a funny name. Obed-Edom. If you don't be careful, you'll mispronounce it. Obed-Edom. 
But even if you call them old bad Edom, God is going to be at his house. <laughs> Which leads me to tell you sometimes God can be there and you not act like you ought to act. <laughs> Let me lift a few things. The first thing. Come on, preacher. The first thing I want to lift about Obed Edom and this, this Ark of the Covenant going into his house. Here's the first thing I wanted to lift. Obed Edom had an open house. An open house. Verse 10, and David was unwilling to move the Ark of the Lord into the city of David with him, but David took it aside to the house of Obed Edom, the Gittite. I don't have time to talk about those Gittites. You, got, you do that history yourself. But there's some questions that we got to ask. Wait a minute, I know you the king. You want to bring that in my house and I know us have died from touching it. I wish I had somebody. You want to bring the Ark of the Covenant into my house? I know you're the king of Israel. I, I, I know your subjects are supposed to obey you, but, but you want to bring that into my house? Obed-Edom sends a message to all of us that your house ought to be open for God. Are y'all hearing me here? You know how it is. You know how it is sometimes when covenant is coming. <laughs> and and you're, 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 you're telling them, give, give me 30 minutes. I wish I had somebody. You know what those 30 minutes are for? You got to try to clean up and get everything ready because you got some unexpected, I wish I had somebody to tell the truth. You got some unexpected company. You weren't expecting anybody. And all of a sudden, somebody calls and says, hey, we're in your neighborhood. Can we stop by the first thing out of your mouth? Give me a little, a little while. But that's not here in the text. Obed Edom was asked, can we bring God to your house? Seemed like to me the text says, Obed Edom said, bring him on. I want to ask you a question today. Can God come to your house? I wish I had somebody. Can God, would God be welcome if he showed up at your house? I need to tell you, you need him there. Talk to me somebody. The Senate is going crazy. Congress is going crazy. We have all these religious zealots that have gone crazy in the world. You can't even ride around in Birmingham without somebody taking a shot at you. You don't know what may or may not happen. You better have God in your house. Talk to me, somebody. I got to hurry. It was a powerful lesson. That's the, that's the first sub point. It was a powerful lesson. Here's a powerful lesson. Look at how y'all look. It. It's a powerful lesson. When, when God, when God, God wants to come in your house, let him in. Y'all hear me here. It's a, it's a powerful lesson. But not only is it a powerful lesson, it's a personal choice. Listen, it's up to you. Don't you get mad when God is blessing us. I wish I had somebody. Don't you get mad when God is blessing at somebody else's house because God is standing at the door, wants to know, can he come in your house? And if you say no, it's you who are turning away the blessings of God. I want God to come in my house and bless me. Talk to me, y'all. Obed Edom says, come on in here, God. Still a lot more time left in this year. I don't know what may happen. Talk to me, somebody. I need the Lord to be there. So that's the first thing. It, he had an open house. I know you're busy. I know y'all got somewhere to go. But pause for a few moments and tell God, come on in my house. Come in here. Are y'all hearing me here? And the older I get, the less I laugh at what the old people used to do. Are y'all hearing me here? We, we need to get a Bible and put it on our table. 
I wish I had somebody here. Some of y'all need to open a Bible because here's how we mistreat God. We don't want him until something comes up. Talk to me somebody. Then when something comes up, we want the Lord to show up and fix everything. Well, I want to tell you, it's better to get in touch with him before something comes up. Talk to me, somebody. Go ahead and tell the Lord, Lord, I need you in my house while everything is going good. Bless me. Stay right here with me just in case something comes up before the year's out. I want you to be here in my house. Not only was it an open house, here's the second thing. It was, it, 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 it was an open house, but it was an opportune time. It was an opportune time. Look at the text again. David, I'm drawing the points out. Stay with me. David is scared to take the ark to... The city, but is at Obed Edom's house. Now, let's look at the ark for a moment. The ark made of wood. I don't have time to go now. I just want to. But, but, but the, the, the ark was covered with different stones. <laughs> and so, when Obed Edom would open the curtains uh -huh. Uh -huh. and the light would come in and hit the stones, light went everywhere. When God is in your house, <laughs> light will go everywhere. Talk to me, somebody. When folks come to your house, they'll see light everywhere. They will know and understand that this is a house of prayer. I wish I had somebody. So they, they, the Ark of the Covenant, it was opportune because people would pass by and they would see all the light shining from Obed Edom's house. All right, all right. And they would look and say, God is in there. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me here? But but, but not only, stay with me on the Ark of the Covenant. It was covered with, with, with gems. And All right. Light was shining. Are y'all getting this? Yes, but here's the second thing. The, the, the rod of Aaron uh -huh. was connected to that Ark of the Covenant. All right. All right. What did they do with Aaron's rod. All right. when, 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 when the people would kind of get out of line, it was Aaron's rod <laughs> that would kind of get them back in place. I wish I had somebody. When God is in your house, y'all ain't hearing me here. When you are out of line, some, see, you see, you ain't going to listen to nobody, but you ought to listen to God. <clears throat> Are y'all hearing me here? And when God is in your house, when you get out of line, God, <laughs> his word will bring you back in line. Are y'all hearing me here? His word. But, but not, only, not only was light there, his word there. Watch this. There was also some peace there. A lot of y'all don't have no peace. Woo! I'm trying to preach. <clears throat> I'm looking at something. You can't have peace with that frown on your face. Talk to me, y'all. But, but, but when God is there... Every time Obed Edom would look at the Ark of the Covenant, he, 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 he's tossing, he can't sleep. And, and, and sister Obed Edom is saying, boy, what's wrong with you? He said, oh no, I can't sleep. She'll tell him, I tell you, go in there and look at the Ark of the Covenant then. And Obed Edom get up out of the bed. 
He go in there and look at the Ark of the Covenant. He come back to the bed, fall asleep. Why yeah. wake up the next morning and say, honey, how, how did you get to sleep last night? He said, well, what I did, when something got on my mind and started worrying me, I went in there and looked at the Ark of the Covenant, and all of a sudden, I had a peace to come over me, and something just started telling me, it's going to be all right. All I'm trying to tell somebody is if God is at your house, I don't care what may be going on all around you, God will help you to know, I wish I had somebody. He'll help you to know that everything is going to be all right. That can only happen when God is at your, at your house. Here's the last thing. Here's the last thing. He, 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 he shows us that if you want your house to be blessed, it has to be an open house. Then the second thing he shows us is that you've got to make sure you take advantage of the opportune time. I want to tell you, somebody's watching your house. They see you coming to church. But, 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 but what they want to know is, is all that going to church showing up at your house? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's powerful. It's one thing to come here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. But there's another thing to make sure that who you are at church is the same person that you are at home. I wish I had somebody. I better say that again, because some of y'all didn't say anything. The same person you are at church ought to be the same person you are at home. Talk to me, somebody. I mean, don't come in here hugging me, and you won't speak to the person you sleep with every day. Don't come here hugging me and go home and not be speaking to somebody because that says to me that there's one of you that comes to church, another you that lives at home and in the community and work on the job. You ought to be the same everywhere you go. Talk to me, somebody. They used to sing a song, and I'll, I'll let you out of here. Let it be real. Let it be real. Whatever you do, I wish I can get y'all to help me here. Let it be real. Hmm? And when you accept who you are and how you are, that's when God will be at your house. So it's an opportune time for you to let some light out your house, let some word out your house, and then have some peace around your house. Turn to the person sitting next to you and say, I need some peace. But here's the last thing we have done. Here's the last thing that you'll see. When God is at your house, you'll, it'll be an open house. It'll be an opportune time. But here's the last thing. You will have outstanding results. Come here. Come here, Obed Edom. Take the mic. I have some members here. They are not hearing me. Maybe they'll hear you. Testify to them. Tell them how you benefited from God being at your house. Well, thank you, Pastor. Give it on to God. <laughs> Pastor E.O. Jackson. To Reverend Turner. And, yes. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, sir. Reverend Wilkerson and Pastor Bo Wright, Reverend Brown, yes. to the officers, yes. members and Christian friends. Yes. Yes. Up My name is Old Bed Eater. And pastor asked me to say a few words yes, about what happened to me. 
when God came to my house. I wish I had somebody. He said, well, my whole story is not in 2 Samuel, but you got to go over sometime to 1 Chronicles 15 and 16 to see the rest of my story. And so I, don't, I know y'all don't have time to do it, and I know how Pastor Jackson preaches, and he just uses one text, so when y'all get out of his presence, Go and look in 1 Chronicles 15 and 16 and you will find out the rest of my story. Here's what happened because God was at my house. I was able to produce some things. Are y'all hearing me here? Because God was at my house. First of all, I produced a singer. Y'all not hearing me here? Because y'all got to understand when the Ark of the Covenant left my house, and entered into the city of David. The king was out there. Y'all ain't hearing me here. The king was out there, and the king was waiting on us to come with the Ark of the Covenant, and the king saw God coming. The king got so happy. The king started taking off his clothes, and the king started singing and dancing everywhere. I want to tell you, when you let God come to your house, he'll put a new song in your heart. Talk to me, somebody. Y'all know I talked about that last week. But when God is at your house, you'll move from a sad song to a happy song. Talk to me, somebody. When you see God at your house, you'll make somebody else sing. Folk can see you broke, busted, Are y'all hearing me here? And they'll look at you and try to figure out where is she making it? Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. I don't believe y'all believe what I'm preaching. If he can stand up under all of that pressure and still have a smile on his face, why should I be discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Are y'all hear me? Why should my heart feel lonely? I wish I had somebody. I'm going to be just like him. I sing. Y'all ain't want to have no church because I'm happy. God is at your house. You, you produce. Ooh, I thought I'd get more out of it. Produce a singer. <laughs> But then, not only will you produce a singer, come here, old bed eat them. What else? Pastor, I told them they had to go to 1 Chronicles 15, 16 to read the rest of my story. Not only did I produce some singers, I produced some servants. I wish I had somebody. He said, because I got some group of fellows and they got the food around with me. And because they got the food around with me, they start serving God. I wish I had somebody. Do you want to know how? And I know he, uh, Bo Wright and Turner, and he fell to start candidating for churches. And they said, what, what you going to do for our church? They said, well, I'm going to grow the church. Well, I need to tell y'all, it ain't my job to grow the church. Are y'all hearing me here? But if folks see you serve, are y'all hearing me here? You ought to find you somewhere in the church and serve your present age. Are y'all hearing me here? Them fellas got the food around with old bed eating and before they knew it, they were involved with the work of the Lord. Are y'all hearing me here? You ought to rub off on somebody. Turn to somebody and say, Lord, help me to rub off. And you don't want to rub off on somebody if you in here sleep. No, you want to rub off on somebody if you're willing to serve the Lord. That's the only way we can make it. Somebody got to be willing to serve the Lord. Y'all hear me? Here's the last thing. We're gone. Said not only, not only, I looked at this text, not only do we have some servants. Y'all hear me? Not only do we have some singles, we have some servants. But, But watch this. The last thing he said, God is at your house. He said, I produce some soul winners. You got to go to 1 Chronicles 15 and 16. You got to go and read the rest of my story. Pastor, I'm trying to tell you, folk. I start talking about what happened at my house. Everywhere I went, 
I start telling folk what happened when the Ark of the Covenant was at my house. Help me, Lord Jesus. Say, what I got with this crowd? I told them, do you know when God was at my house, my house was blessed. Are y'all hearing me here? And here's what, when I got through telling them, they went and told somebody else. Hey, man, you heard what happened at Obed Edom's house? No, what happened at his house? The Ark of the Covenant was at his house, and Obed Edom got blessed. They left that crowd, went on down the street and saw another crowd. Hey, man, you heard what happened? No, what happened? The Ark of the Covenant was at Obed-Edom's house. I know I'm preaching. And Obed-Edom's house got blessed. He left out of Israel and went on over in Fairfield. Hey, man, you heard what happened? Now, nah, man, what happened? The Ark of the Covenant was at Obed-Edom's house. Obed-Edom's house got blessed. That fella left Fairfield, went on over in Bethlehem. Y'all ain't helping me here. Got over in Bethlehem set. Y'all heard, hey man, you heard what happened? No, what happened? The Ark of the Covenant went to Obed Eden's house. Obed Eden's house got blessed. Left Bethlehem, went on down Tuscaloosa, Clemmy. Went over in Tuscaloosa and said, hey man, y'all heard what happened? No, what happened? The Ark of the Covenant went to Obed Eden's house. Obed Eden's house got blessed. Left Tuscaloosa, went on over into, to, uh, into uh, Mississippi. Got over in Mississippi. Hey, man. Y'all heard what happened? No. I got a covenant with the Obed Eden house. Obed Eden house got blessed. Left out of Mississippi, went over into Louisiana. Hey, man. Y'all ain't finding me. You heard what happened? No, what happened? I got a covenant, went to Obed Edom's house. Obed Edom's house got blessed. Left Louisiana, went on into Texas. Hey, man, y'all heard what happened? No, what happened? I got a covenant, went to Obed Edom's house. Obed Edom's house got blessed. Are y'all hearing me here? Left Texas, went on over into California. <laughs> y'all ain't helping me with this. Y'all heard what happened? Told them the story. Kept on telling the story till everybody got the word. All I'm trying to do is tell you if you'll stop sitting on what God has done for you. Because there's somebody in here right now that God has blessed your house and you haven't told anybody yet. You haven't told anybody that if it had not been for the law, your stuff would be outdoors right now. You hadn't told anybody that you got behind on your mortgage. But God, y'all don't want to have no church. Y'all got classic hangover. You done stayed up all night long, y'all got classic hangover. But I still want to tell you, when you get over the classic, and you go home and walk around your house, you're going to come back to the same conclusion and say, the Lord is blessing me right now. Lord, right now, is there anybody in here that can help me say, yes, the Lord is blessing my house. Why don't y'all turn to somebody and tell them, the Lord is blessing my house. If you able to stand up, I need y'all to help me preach now. I need y'all to help me preach. You've been sitting too long anyway. Get a little circulation going. Now turn to somebody. Let me see if I can get my... I said turn to somebody. And take them by the hand. And look them in the face. And tell them I'm sorry for interrupting your worship. But tell them, I got a testimony. Tell them, at my house, I've seen some ups. I've seen some downs. Tell them, at my house, it got rough sometimes. 
tell him at my house it got tough sometime but here's my testimony tell him the Lord has kept me above water tell him the Lord has kept me above water y'all ain't talking to nobody tell him the Lord has kept me above water y'all ain't telling him like I need to tell him like you really mean tell him the Lord has kept me above water tell him I got down to my last dollar but the Lord stepped in on time ain't God alright anybody in here glad that the Lord is at your house anybody here got him at your house if you're not ashamed, step out in the eye. If you're not ashamed to let anybody know, I didn't intend to get happy like this, but if you're not ashamed to let everybody know that the Lord is at your house, step out in that eye. Look at these scary folks. Step out in that eye. If you're not ashamed to let them know that the Lord is on your side, now you finna. Listen, you've been to praise God yourself. I need you to take your right hand and lift it up to the Lord. And don't look at me, look at him. And tell him, Lord, I just want to thank you for being at my house. You've been looking out for me. You've been taking care of me. You've been helping me pay my bills. You've been making everything all right. Praise him. You ain't acting like the Lord been paying your bill. You ain't been acting like the Lord been helping you. Anybody in here ever really been down to your last dime? Uh-uh, y'all faking me. Y'all, uh-uh. I'm talking about your last dollar bill. I'm talking about your last dollar bill. And somebody didn't even have a paper dollar bill. You had to get some quarters and put them together just to buy you a cold drink. But then he step in. I said, didn't he step in and make it all right? He won! <laughs> I'm still looking at y'all playing. I'm still looking at y'all playing. See, Marilyn got my baby. But if she didn't have the baby, I tell her, come up here and help me tell this story about how God will make everything all right when you can't see your way when some got you blind the Lord will step in he'll let you walk by faith and not by sight he'll keep you till everything is all right I'm glad that God is at my house anybody in here glad that he's at your house yeah Thank God today. Thank God today. We got to go, y'all. I'm over time. We got to go. I'm over time. But thank God today. <laughs> thank you, old bed eater. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate you, old bed eater. I've, I've had this conversation with you before, but I'm glad. You reminded me of what it's like. When God is at your house. Man, I'm going to tell y'all. I used to lay awake at night. Trying to wonder how things are going to work out. But stuff I preached started coming to my mind. And I learned how to put it all in his hands. <laughs> this and that. <laughs> I wish I had somebody. I put it all in his hand. Here's what the Lord says. 
If you're going to worry, I can't work. <laughs> but if I'm going to work, then you don't worry. <laughs> and y'all, won't he work it out? I don't care what it is, the Lord will. Come on, brothers. The Lord will work it out. Help me, Lord Jesus. And when God works it out, he works it out because he's at your house. If you hadn't invited him in, I want you to do it today. When you get home, tell the Lord, Lord, I need you to be at my house. Y'all hear me here? And when God is at your house, you, you don't ever know what kind of challenges you're going to you're gonna face and you don't know what's gonna come up. Everything can be all right today and some can come up tomorrow, but when God is at your house, hmm, you can have peace about whatever comes up. No matter what comes up, no matter what, I don't care. Go to the doctor. I went to the doctor the other day. Some stuff he said ain't right. I said I ain't gonna worry about it. So I told Marilyn, I ain't gonna worry about it. I ain't gonna worry about tomorrow. I'm gonna live today. And just keep God in this house. If you're in here today, if you let him in your house, if you're in here and you never let God in your house, I'm telling you, you need him in your house. If you've never met him, never accepted him and